During the First World War, the port city of Halifax on Canada's east coast was one of the busiest in North America. In December of 1917, it was also the site of one of the worst disasters in Canadian history. As one of the largest deepwater harbors in the world and the closest major port to Europe, Halifax was the last safe harbor for ships bringing much-needed personnel and supplies to the battlefields of France and Belgium. Ships would take shelter in Bedford Basin before setting out across the treacherous waters of the North Atlantic. At its narrowest point, the harbor is less than half a kilometer wide. To prevent collisions, ships were required to stay in two lanes, incoming ships on the east and outgoing ships on the west. On the evening of December 5th, the Mont Blanc, a French cargo ship carrying explosives, arrived in Halifax. Normally, ships carrying dangerous cargo would fly warning flags, but the regulations had been changed to avoid giving targets to enemy submarines. Anti-submarine nets had been strung across the harbor for the night, so the Mont Blanc would have to wait until morning to enter the safety of the harbor. Meanwhile, in Bedford Basin, a Norwegian cargo ship, the Emo, was waiting to leave on its way to New York to pick up supplies to bring to refugees in Belgium. Refueling had taken longer than expected, putting the Emo a day behind schedule. Both the Mont Blanc and the Emo would pass through the Narrows the next morning, and both would be in a hurry. Both ships started moving at around 7.30 in the morning. The Mont Blanc was guided by harbor pilot Francis Mackey, who had boarded the night before. In its hold was more than 2,000 tons of high explosives. This included TNT, picric acid, and gun cotton. On deck were 2,000 barrels of highly flammable benzene fuel. As it was leaving Bedford Basin, the Emo passed the SS Clara, an American steamer, the first ship in line to enter the harbor. The Clara was on the wrong side of the harbor, which forced the Emo to veer into the oncoming lane. Before it had a chance to correct its course, the pilot on board the Emo spotted the Stella Maris, a tugboat pulling two barges from the shipyard toward the basin, also traveling in the wrong lane. To avoid a collision, the Emo was forced to veer even further towards the eastern side of the harbor, putting it directly into the path of the Mont Blanc as it entered the narrowest part of the harbor. With the ships on a collision course, the Mont Blanc sounded its whistle, signaling the Emo to return to its channel. The Emo responded, signaling that it would remain on its present course. Collision was now only moments away. At the last second, the Mont Blanc steered hard to port. At the same time, the Emo cut its engines and reversed, causing the bow to swing starboard. Sparks from the collision ignited the barrels of benzene stored on the Mont Blanc's deck. Slowly, the burning ship began to drift toward the city. With the fire spreading, the crew of the Mont Blanc abandoned ship. The cruiser Niobe, which was anchored nearby, sent a boat to assist. Crowds gathered along the shore to watch the fire, unaware that they were watching a ticking time bomb. Train dispatcher Vince Coleman sent a telegram warning approaching trains to stop before reaching the harbor. The Stella Maris had returned to assist, hoping to work with the crew of the Ni Niobe to tow the burning ship away from the shore, but they were out of time. It was the largest man-made explosion before the invention of the atomic bomb. Around 2,000 people were killed, either by the blast itself or the fires that followed. Nearly every building within 800 meters of the explosion was destroyed. Pieces of the Mont Blanc were found more than five kilometers away. Within days, hundreds of doctors, nurses, and other relief workers flooded into the city, along with supplies and donations from throughout Canada and the United States. As the city began to recover, people demanded answers. How could this have happened? Attention focused on Mackey and the crew of the Mont Blanc. The captain, pilot, and first officer on board the Emo were all killed in the blast. An initial inquiry found the Mont Blanc guilty of causing the disaster. The crew should have exercised more caution, knowing how dangerous their cargo was. When the case was appealed to the Supreme Court of Canada, both ships were found to be equally responsible. In their decision, the court said that in the chaos and desperation of wartime, mistakes were perhaps inevitable, and it was a series of mistakes and oversights that had led to one of the deadliest maritime disasters in history.